Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We are in Mark chapter 6, and we're going to be starting verse 30 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, verses 30 through 44 deal with Jesus feeding the 5,000. <clears> All right, Jesus feeds the 5,000. Uh, let's read verses 30 to 32. And it says here, And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. <clears throat> And he said unto them, Come ye apart, uh, you come ye yourselves apart into a desert place, and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into a desert place by ship privately. Now, the apostles have been gone for a while, and now they all have returned. If you go back to chapter 6 and verse 7, it tells where Jesus sends out the 12 on their mission to go into cities and towns and villages and preach the coming of the kingdom of God. Now, in verse 30, they've returned to Jesus. And uh, basically, Jesus wants to take them away so that they can have rest, all right? He wants to depart. Jesus sees the need for them to depart away from the city and from the crowd to get some rest. And John's gospel says that they went to a mountain. In John chapter 6, verses 1 to 13, John says that they went to a mountain. Luke's gospel says that it was in the area of Bethsaida in Luke 9, verses 10 to 17. There were several reasons why Jesus wanted to depart with them. Number one, to get away from the hostility of the Jewish leaders. The second reason would be for the disciples' rest but not rest in the hot lands, the hot, the hot lowlands of the area, but in the cool area of the mountain. Number three, the reason why Jesus would want to depart and get away with them is that to hear their reports of what they taught and how they were received. All right, did people receive you? Did they reject you? What did you teach? Did anybody get healed? He'd want to hear how it went with them. Number four, to give them more teachings and instructions. And number five, to get away from those who would want to make Jesus king and to get out also to get out of Herod's district, right? To get out of Herod's district. So by simply getting in a ship and going over across just a few miles, maybe not even that far, to Bethsaida, they were out of Herod's district, and Jesus could for, uh, take the disciples away for some rest and relaxation and encouraging, encouraging his disciples. Now, verse 33 says, And the people saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran afoot thither out of all cities, and out went them, and came together unto him. So it says here, uh, many saw him departing, and it says, and many knew him. Many knew him. Now, this Greek here, the Greek for that phrase, seems to imply that they understood Jesus' intentions. And therefore, they knew basically where Jesus and the disciples were going, so they ran ahead. It's like they, they, they knew Jesus and they knew basically <laughs> where he was going. 
So they ran ahead. Now, one commentator suggests that because the Passover was at hand, if we see in John chapter 6 and verse 4, because the Passover was at hand, that a number of this great crowd was on their way to Jerusalem. Because these people did not want to travel down through Samaria, they passed over on the, on the east side of the, of the Sea of Galilee, and they would travel down the east side of the Jordan River, and then they would cross back over the Jordan River and go to Jerusalem when they, when they passed the land of Samaria. And this is what normally happened because Samaria, if you look in your Bible dictionary, that the, uh, the land of Samaria that they had in order to go from, from Galilee down to Jerusalem, you'd have to pass through the land of Samaria. And, uh, that was on the west side of the Jordan River. And Jewish people didn't do that, especially scribes and Pharisees, religious people. They would never go through Samaria, okay? So they would always cross over and go down the, the east side of the Sea of Galilee and travel down the Jordan River until you got past the area of Samaria and then cross over the Jordan River and go to Jerusalem. They would bypass the land of Samaria. So it's believed that when Jesus was in Bethsaida, which that is the east side, the beginning of the east side of the Sea of Galilee, people were traveling across, instead of going across the, the Sea of Galilee, getting in a ship and going across, they were walking over the north side the north side of the Sea of Galilee and going on down, all right? And uh, so as they were traveling from, let's like, say, Capernaum or wherever, uh, they went on the east, the, the, the west side of the Sea of Galilee, they would, they would take a short trip up and around the Sea of Galilee and come around and then go down. So it's believed that because of the Passover, many of these people were on their way to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover, and therefore, a lot of these people were, were uh, um, stopped and listened to Jesus, right? Therefore, because Jesus was already on the east side of the Sea of Galilee, a number of these travelers would hear about Jesus and they would join in with the crowd. Some also may have heard about John the Baptist's death, his murder, and that he would, he would, they, they, they would feel compelled to join in the gathering, right? So some of them maybe have heard that John the Baptist was murdered, uh, was put to death by Herod, and therefore they, uh, they, maybe they were followers of John or distant followers of John. But now that John is dead, they would attach themselves to Jesus, all right? Now, verse 34 says, And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Now, you picture in your mind, there's a multitude of people here in front of Jesus. He has compassion upon them and he begins to teach them, all right? The Gospels of Matthew and Luke relate that Jesus healed those that had need of healing, all right? That he didn't just teach. Mark just says he teaches. But Matthew and Luke says that Jesus also healed people that were in this crowd that needed to be healed, right? So it says here in the Gospel of Mark, uh, he began to teach them many things. And this word for teach is, is infinitive, and it shows a duration of action, all right? A duration of action. So Jesus 
and the disciples go away for some rest. And as soon as they land near Bethsaida, they have no, no rest for them. <laughs> so far, they're going away to get away from the crowd for some rest and relaxation. And as soon as they hit the shore, here's this multitude of people just waiting for them, right? Jesus saw these people and he saw their needs and he had compassion upon them, right? He didn't just, you know, hey, listen, I ain't here for you. We need some rest and relaxation. Can you give us a couple of days? Wait here, we'll be back, right? <laughs> no, no. Jesus, Jesus saw their need and he had compassion and he wanted to meet their needs, right? Now, listen, there are times when God will not let you rest. There's times in your, in your walk with God when he will not let, let you rest. You're ministering and ministering and, and here's another person and ministering to them. The needs of people are great. And there are times when people's needs come before your personal comfort. There's times when people's needs come before your personal comfort. Will we go the extra mile for someone when they are, when they are tired or hungry? I'm sorry, when we are tired or hungry, will we go the extra mile and minister to them? Or we tell them we ain't got time. I, I'm tired, right? I need a rest, right? Will, will, we, will we go the extra mile uh, when, when we're busy? There's times when God, people's needs are everywhere. And, and there's times when God will just, not let you rest because he's going to bring someone to you that needs his love and his compassion, a prayer for them, right? Verse 35 and 36. You know what? I'm going to stop here because verse 35 and 36 are uh, going to be a little bit long. So we're going to stop this lesson now and we'll continue next lesson in verse 35, all right? But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.